In this lesson, we will learn about reading and using charts and graphs. Additional information on this topic can be found in the General Aviation Maintenance Technician's Handbook. Electric wire charts are used to determine the correct wire gauge for a given application or the maximum length of a particular gauge of wire in an application. You will follow these instructions for finding the correct wire gauge for a given application. And you will follow these instructions for finding the maximum allowable length of a given wire gauge in a circuit. This is an electric wire chart for determining the correct wire gauge for a given application or for finding the maximum allowable length of a given gauge of wire for a particular current flow. Remember the three things that affect resistance in a conducting wire. The smaller the gauge of wire, the greater the resistance. The larger the gauge number, the smaller the gauge of wire. For example, a 20 gauge wire is smaller than a 12 gauge wire and offers more resistance to current flow. The longer the wire, the greater the resistance. The higher the temperature of the wire, the greater the resistance. The greater the resistance, the more heat the wire will generate. We want to select wire with a gauge or length with a low enough resistance to prevent the circuit from overheating without using an unnecessarily large gauge wire, because heavier gauge wires take up space, add unnecessary weight, and increase cost. The problems we will work in this class will all involve the 28 volt circuit with a maximum allowable voltage drop of 1 volt. The numbers running vertically in this column are for wire length in feet. The numbers across the top of this chart are wire gauges with the larger numbers representing the smaller gauges. The red diagonal lines represent current flows in amperes. Curve 1 represents wires that are run in a bundle with other wires or through a conduit. Because the heat generated by wires run in bundles or conduit cannot dissipate as readily, a heavier gauge wire is often required in these applications. Curve number 2 represents wires that are run singly in free air. These wires dissipate heat more readily than those run in conduit or bundles, and therefore a smaller gauge wire can oftentimes be utilized in these applications. Curve 3 represents intermittent circuits running for a maximum of 2 minutes. Examples of these types of circuits are flat motor circuits, starter and landing gear circuits. Because these circuits do not accumulate heat over longer periods of time, they may utilize a smaller gauge wire for a given current flow. Let's see how we can use this wire chart to determine the, the minimum gauge of wire needed in a 15 amp circuit 30 feet in length. First, we will locate the 15 amp diagonal and trace it down until it meets the horizontal line for a wire length of 30 feet in a 28 volt system. Note the point where these two lines intersect and trace a line straight up from there. The lines for the amperage and wire length intersect between the points for 14 gauge and 12 gauge wire. We will always choose the larger of the two wire gauges in these instances. Therefore, we find that in this circuit with a current of 15 amps running for 30 feet, we will need a 12 gauge wire. In the previous example, we found the correct wire gauge for a given length of wire with a particular current flow. It did not matter whether the wire was run in a conduit or bundled with other wires, or whether it was a single wire running in free air. Because the intersection point of the lines for the current and wire length were above curve 1. In this example, we will show how to determine the correct wire gauge for a wire run in conduit where the lines for wire length and current intersect below curve 1. 
If we have a 25 amp circuit running for 12 feet through a conduit, we will start by drawing a diagonal line down from the midpoint between the 20 amp and 30 amp diagonals. Next, we will draw a horizontal line from the 12 foot point in the wire length column for a 28 volt system. These two lines intersect below curve 1. And because our wire in this example is running through a conduit, we next trace our diagonal current line back up to curve 1. Then we will draw a line straight up from where our current diagonal and curve 1 intersect to determine the proper wire gauge of wire for this application. We find that this line lies between the markings for 12 gauge and 10 gauge wire. Again we select the larger of the two and now we have determined that 10 gauge is the minimum acceptable wire size for a wire running 12 feet through conduit in a 28 volt system in a 15 amp circuit. The brake horsepower is the power delivered to the propeller shaft of an aircraft engine. The brake mean effective pressure is the average pressure measured in pounds per square inch inside the cylinder of a reciprocating engine during the power stroke. It can be found by utilizing the brake horsepower chart and following the instructions seen here. The brake horsepower chart can also be used to determine the engine speed needed to produce a given brake horsepower with a given brake mean effective pressure. In a brake horsepower chart, the brake horsepower is found at the top of the chart. The cubic inch displacement for the various engines covered in the chart is found in a series of diagonal lines on the left side of the chart. The series of diagonal lines on the right side of the chart indicate the engine speed in RPM and the brake mean effective pressure is given at the bottom right of the chart. If we wanted to find the brake mean effective pressure of a 2000 cubic inch engine providing 1700 brake horsepower at 2700 RPM, we would begin by drawing a vertical line down from 1700 horsepower until it intersected the diagonal line for a 2000 cubic inch engine. Next, we would draw a horizontal line from that intersection until a point where it intersected the 2700 RPM diagonal line. From that point of intersection, we would draw a line straight down to the bottom of the chart. And we will find that at 2700 RPM, while producing 1700 horsepower, a 2000 cubic inch engine will have an average cylinder pressure 250 pounds per square inch. If we wanted to find the engine speed needed to produce 1,200 horsepower with a 1,830 cubic inch engine with a brake mean effective pressure of 260 pounds per square inch, we would begin by drawing a vertical line down from 1,200 horsepower until it intersected the diagonal line for the 1,830 cubic inch engine. Then we would draw a horizontal line from that point of intersection to the right edge of the chart. Next, we would draw a vertical line up from a brake mean effective pressure of 260 pounds per square inch until it intersected the horizontal line we just drew. The diagonal line for engine speed where these two lines intersect is the engine speed required to produce 1,200 horsepower in a 1,830 cubic inch engine with a brake mean effective pressure of 260 pounds per square inch. In this example, we find that that engine speed is 2,000 
RPM. A fuel consumption or performance chart is used to find the amount of fuel an engine will burn per hour at a specific horsepower. To find the amount of fuel an engine will burn per hour for a given power setting utilizing a performance chart, simply follow the instructions seen here. If you want to determine how much fuel would be required on a specific flight, simply multiply the fuel burn per hour by the number of hours of flight. Horizontally along the bottom of this performance chart is the engine speed in RPM. Running diagonally from the bottom left of the chart to the top right is the propeller load horsepower curve. Vertically on the left side of the chart is the brake horsepower. Vertically along the bottom right side of the chart is the specific fuel consumption in pounds per brake horsepower per hour. And running horizontally near the bottom of the chart is the propeller load specific fuel consumption curve. Let's say we wanted to plan how much fuel in gallons we would need for a two-hour flight in this aircraft plus enough for a one-half hour reserve while operating at 2,450 RPM. We would begin our calculations by drawing a vertical line from 2,450 RPM until it intersected the propeller load horsepower curve. Then we would draw a horizontal line from that intersection point to the left side of the chart. There we see that our line ends almost midway between 130 and 140 horsepower, giving us 134 horsepower. Next we would draw a horizontal line from the intersection of the vertical engine speed line and propeller load specific fuel consumption curve to the right side of the chart. There we see that our line ends almost midway between 0.45 and 0.50 pounds per brake horsepower per hour, giving us 0.47 pounds of fuel per brake horsepower per hour. We then multiply 134 horsepower by 0.47 by 2 and 1 half hours and then divide by 6 to get 26 and 1 quarter gallons of fuel required for this flight. The design limit rig load is the maximum load an installed aircraft cable is designed to safely withstand. It is represented in this chart by the diagonal lines running from the bottom left side of the chart up and to the right. Each of these diagonal lines corresponds to a cable size shown on the left hand side of the chart. The temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is given along the bottom of the chart and the rigging load in pounds is given vertically along the right hand side of the chart. Let us say we needed to determine the design limit rig load for a 537 seconds inch 7 by 19 cable at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. First we would draw a vertical line up from 70 degrees Fahrenheit to the design limit rig load diagonal for a 530 seconds 7 by 19 cable. Then we would draw a horizontal line from that intersection point to the right side of the chart. There we find that this cable is designed to withstand a rigging load of 93 pounds at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. 